Hey everybody, Chuck here. The little YJ is getting surgery performed on it. What you're about to see is the footage of a complete engine swap. Right now my son's snatching the battery tray and I should have already YouTubed it, but I've already pulled the transfer case. The reason behind the whole swap, I scored a motor transmission, a good motor, a good transmission. The transmission went out on this one right here. So, time to swap them out. First thing we got to do, Ray has been drained already, and we're working on pulling the whole dog house. He's pulling the battery tray right now. I've already dropped the transfer case. I guess I could have YouTube that, but you guys have seen that before. I know, even the, the clutch swap, you guys see me drop the transmission. But anyway, when I put it back together, I'll show you how the transfer case works. And the uh, motor and transmission that's going into this actually come out of a uh, Cherokee. So there's a little bit of a transmission difference between the two, and I'll show you the difference a little bit later on. I'll probably show you guys the difference in a separate video, but I'll put a link into it to show you, because I uh, need to show you how to make a template to make the um, Wrangler uh, transfer case here. The Wrangler transfer case here is correct, of course, for the Cherokee or the Wrangler, but the difference is the Cherokee transfer case the Cherokee transmission, I'll get it right in a minute people, the Cherokee transmission are clocked a little different, meaning in the Cherokee the transmission, the transfer case sits downward more versus the Wrangler sits more upward. So what I have to do, and I'll show you guys in a separate video, that I'll show you guys how to make that template to clock the transfer case upward 10 degrees. And when I get the transmission uh, motor and everything pulled out of this, I'll sit them side by side and show you guys the difference between the Cherokee and the Wrangler transmissions. So off to the next step, we're getting this doghouse off. Let me do this real quick. All right, first thing we got to do is get this radiator out here, and we got bolts here, here. Oops, I then knocked the bucket over. We got some bolts down there that's got to come out. They come down the fenders here. If you get that back side here, you see a bolt right there, down there. And as you progress on down the fenders, those bolts have got to come out. The bolts for the battery tray come loose. And so I'll see you guys in see you guys the next step. Also, make sure you check your wiring harness before you start pulling anything. He's already taken the battery, the fuse block loose. You need to take it loose here from the fenders because when you pull the doghouse to pull the motor out, you need to make sure all your wiring's loose. Your headlights, you need to pop it loose, pull your wiring through the front core support. And it just makes life a lot easier pulling these motors out because the motor's so long. The trans if you pull motor transmission and all, it's the best way to do it. So I'll see you guys at the next step. One thing I need to point out is whenever you're pulling the battery tray, there's a lot of crud build up right here. There's a bolt underneath there. It's got to come out before you pull the battery tray. Okay, down there we got more braces that's tied into the uh, firewall. Let's see where Lars is getting to those. And you got to pull these rods right here. In a minute, we'll get down inside that mess. All right, everyone. I changed my mind. I'm not pulling the doghouse off. Bolts are rusted, risking breaking two stuff. My son's crying, so we can't do it. Crying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you just make the most pain in the butt method possible. So basically what I'm going to do is, I've already had the transmission of this thing about two or three times, and I know the transmission comes out pretty easy. So I'll split the transmission loose from the block, and I'm just going to bring the block straight out the front. So he's pulling the alternator at the moment. Uh, Dad's not got down and pulled the O2 sensor and all the linkage here and the radiator. We have a bolt there, down there, and with the uh, power steering pump, you guys refer back to my other video when I change the belt and stuff, you know how it comes off. So, get that off, get the wiring harness off, and all the water's been unhooked. And then I'll go back under a little bit and I'll drop the exhaust. So, see you guys at the next one. I better focus anyway. All right, this rail right here, this little uh, wire. Metal. Yeah, little piece of metal right there. Oh, uh -huh. this little wire right here. That's what holds the injector plug down onto the injector. Easiest way to take those off. If you got one of these little picks, it makes life a lot easier. But if you got a really small screwdriver, he stuck his finger in the camera. He means his booger picker is what he meant. And no, not your booger picker because it won't get down inside there. This pick. He knows that that would hurt. Pick your nose with it. You dig a book around. Watch this, everybody. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's comedy in the video. 
All right, so you take your pick, you get it behind that wire here. If you pull it back a little bit, then get your pick behind it and push it. It'll hang that wire out on the plug. This is supposed to. Yeah, it was just supposed to when it cooperates. All right, I think we got it. Here we go. All right, rotate to the other side. Get over here. Hang the wire. Hang the wire. Yeah, I'll get it right. I'll get it, man, people. I didn't say it was easy. But I got to hold the camera to do this at the same time. So it's kind of difficult. All right, get in behind it. And sometimes you can pull it all the way out like that, too, and that works. But the thing of it is, then you take it and just work it, and it unplugs. There it is. Then you push the spring back on because you don't want to lose that. If you lose that, you got a problem. So there's how to pop the injector harness. All right, people, we're breaking the motor mount. We're getting serious. Check out the... <laughs> Check out the cheater bar. <laughs> Talk about some redneck engineering right now. <laughs> All right, I mentioned a moment ago about separating the transmission. Y'all going to discover I'm not very decisive on things. But I'm pulling the grill out. That way I can bring it all out one piece. So what we got underneath here, I've already poured a couple of them. That going, it's getting dark, can't see nothing. Okay, in the last shot, you guys, uh, showing you guys where the bolts were to pull the front core support radiator stuff out and it was getting dark on us last night but you can see here bolt here here off this angle brace here one there and you got two up here and here's your marker side marker light too so be sure yep that's i don't think it runs through yeah it just runs right there so we separate your headlight and all that you just that all hangs out there and of course then your support rods then you can have your body bushing right here it's got to come out. Uh, it comes through right there. I don't know how much I'm going to get done today because it has been doing nothing but storming. I mean, like seriously storming all day long. So I may get out here and get crank a couple wrenches and get wet. Who knows? But here's the bolts on this side. I haven't pulled them out yet. So anyway, all that should bring out your front core support radiator area. So I'm going to grab my ratchet and pull them out of there. Okay, once you get all your hardware removed, you got you know, all your bolts from there and... The whole core support's loose and ready to come out. We gotta take care of our electricals next. See the wiring harness runs in here, unplug your headlight, it runs down side there. Now that lights out for a reason, I'll show you in just a moment. Then you look at here, you got your little clips, hold your wiring harness in as it come across the core support into this light and then plug it in here. So we gotta get rid of unplug all that. Now logic would think that you can take this right here, unclip it, rotate it, pull it back, and the world is good, you've got your little bulb out and you don't have to take you know take anything apart really. Wrong answer. There's not enough room. Let's see if I can pop this one handy here. So there's not enough room to bring that out like that. Oops, sorry, I got the camera all messed up. Alright, so there's not enough room to bring it out. So what you have to do, you've got two Phillips head screws and hang it out like this. Then you take it unclip it and pop it out. And then you're good to go, see? And that's how you gotta bring your marker lights out. Then once I get the wiring harness pulled out, I can take the whole front uh, core support radiator out. And one more thing I was gonna point out too, uh, didn't mention the ground, you gotta make sure you pull it off. It's a 5 16 Otherwise, well, you can pull all the harness you want to, but that's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna take that out and unclip all the harness on the front core support and pull all that out. Now when you go to pop these clips, uh, let me see if I can do this with hold the camera at the same time. Take your screwdriver and stick right in behind that lip right there. Take a wedge it just a little bit. They open right up. See, there you go. Pretty easy. And that's how you open the clips up. Ta-da! It's out. Look at that. Wide open. Take the cherry picker, you come in this way, hook your chain right here, pick it up, straight back. It brings the whole motor transmission and everything out. Now one thing you want to look at, your fenders are a little floppy, but just you know whenever you're working on it, don't be laying on top of the fender or anything like that. Which really at this point, there's not a whole lot of reason to. The only thing I have left up top is motor mounts down here cracking them loose the one on the passenger side is already loose as you've seen from the great big huge monster cheetah bar that was hooked onto it 
Uh, you can see down there my front pumpkin didn't drive shafts out of course, but I already told you I had the transfer case out. Uh, actually there ain't a whole lot left for me to do to get ready to pull this baby out of here. I've got the back of the transmission set up on, let me come around here show you. Transmission jacks holding the transmission up in place right now. I gotta unhook the exhaust from the um, header. And that's about all I have left. And I can pull this sucker around here. Let's see. Starter, starter's still hooked up. Still gotta unhook that. So, nonetheless, not a whole lot to go. Now, I wanna point something out to you guys real quick. These little things are here when I was pulling them through the uh, core support. They're not exactly the easiest thing to come out, but they're not hard either. But what you got is these little donut gaskets here. And what they do on the light here, the sit like right there, then that locks in, it compresses down, it keeps water and debris and stuff out of the inside of your uh, light lenses there. So be sure not to lose those or tear them up if you can prevent it. But there's the harness that's hanging out of the way, so I'll just throw it back there out of the way and I get ready to pull the motor. So at this point, I'll do 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 do. I guess I'll get my creeper out so I'm not laying on a wet driveway and drop the exhaust so I'll see you guys in a bit this right here was it's your air intake that goes up inside the grill right here it tucks up inside there and snaps in then this right here hooks onto your air box where your air filter stuff such is now whenever I was trying to work that harness out where it goes see how, see how it's moving right there it was kind of hard to tuck the harness in behind all that so I had to take it out pretty easy to do and what you do is take your hand right on top of it and you push it downward like that and it snaps it right out of place you see how the snorkel right there kind of arcs whenever you're pushing it down that radius right there just kind of pops it and snaps it right up out of that hole right there let me get this a little better out of that square hole right there a rectangular hole so I just want to point that out to you real quick now I just want to point something out to you guys one, uh, one more thing too Power steering pump was here, now it's there. I did not, well, I, I didn't take it off. My dad took it off. He was up here yesterday to help me get this thing broke down. Don't unhook your lines. Your power steering, you know, your pressure line or your return line. Don't unhook them. There's no point in it. Simply because the only thing you need to do is take your pump off the bracketry here, lay it down or out of the way. So whenever you bring the motor up and out, just be sure your tail shaft, uh, anything that's protruding from the motor just doesn't hit your pump and damage anything. Uh, reservoir, I mean, you take it loose from the fender up there or from the course board, it's like rides right along in here. Set it up here out of the way. There, therefore, you don't have to go out and buy no more power steering fluid. Um, no mess to lay in. So just take it off the bracketry, set it down there out of the way. Also, if you had air conditioning, which would be right here, this Jeep did not come out with air. But if you had air conditioning, you know how expensive the Freon can be if you have to regas it back up. Not to mention uh, having to repressurize, you now re-vacuum the system to put the Freon into it, blah, 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 blah. Just a whole bunch of crap you don't have to deal with. Take it off, take the compressor off here, set it down here out of the way. Don't unhook your lines. But this Jeep did not come out with air, so it's not anything I have to deal with there. Um... You guys know on one of my past videos that I have, you see right here, this is the CAD, the central axle disconnect. The uh, YJs and the um, XJs of this generation, their four-wheel drive, have a uh, disconnect that slides a collar back and forth side here that either engages or disengages the four-wheel drive. That black line here is where I converted to a manual because of the vacuum pot here is just a pile of crap, it doesn't work. So I converted to manual. So while I have all this out, I'm going to go ahead and pull the vacuum lines and all this stuff off this. Trace it all the way back to wherever the heck it goes. And I'm going to eliminate that. Try to clean it up under the hood a little bit while I've got the motor out of it. So, I just wanted to point that out. And I'll put a link to the video if you guys haven't seen it before. And how, to, how I did the uh, manual conversion. So, off to the next step. As much as I don't want to, I'm having a lazy day, people. Still got the exhaust to disconnect, so I guess I'm jumping on my creeper. Uh, excuse me, going on my creeper and going underneath there and disconnecting that. Still got the starter back there to disconnect. And that's about all I have left, and she's ready to come out. See you guys at the next one.
Okay, you can see I've got the exhaust down now. <clears throat> it's a factory header. Uh, they normally got bolts coming out right here from the factory, but this thing right here, this poor Jeep right here, when I first got it, it was pushed off the trailer. It wasn't even drivable when I got it, so she's been abused badly. I'm just putting her back together the best I can. So I just had a couple 5 16 bolts holding the exhaust up right there. Here's a fluid line for your hydraulic clutch, and this is actually a brand, I mean, this clutch has never even pulled this Jeep. Reason being, okay, you've seen the, one of the past videos, I put a new clutch in this thing, new clutch pressure plate, throw up there and uh, showed you the flywheel, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was on left work one day, come down, hung a left, sit down at a stoplight, all of a sudden the transmission just popped. I mean, it just made a kind of weird pop sound, and it was sitting there grinding. Now, mind you, I'm sitting there in neutral at a stoplight. And this is basic. This is the basic reason as to why I pulled the motor and transmission out of this thing. Uh, anyway, I was sitting at the light. I heard that pop sound, and it just sitting there and started grinding. I tried to put it in first gear, second gear, and it was just it would go, but I didn't like it. It would vibrate like crazy until you know I got into third gear. And after third, fourth, and fifth, it was fine. So I was able to get on home from Nashville, not a problem. So I thought, just by chance, you know. The clutch has never really felt right in this thing since I put a new one in. So I warranted the clutch, got put another clutch pressure plate, throw a bearing ball all by into it, just maybe, hopeful. And of course it didn't fix it, which I didn't think it was going to, but I had to try it. So what happened to the transmission, I have no earthly idea, because I've never beat on this thing, I've never been rough on it. I mean, I, fought, I wheeled it a little bit, but it's never been hard on it. But, the owner, the previous owner, before me was a 14-year-old kid used to take it out as a farm toy. Beat the crap out of this poor Jeep. And it has shown a lot of signs of abuse. So I guess the transmission just really had all it could handle throughout life, I guess, and finally gave up. But later on, I'm going to tear it apart and look at it, see what's going on. I've got another motor transmission over on a trailer right now, so I'm pulling this out getting ready to drop in. The motor and transmission come out of a Cherokee. This, of course, is a Wrangler. This is the back end of the Wrangler transmission, the transfer case removed. The Cherokee hole pattern is different. The clock different. So I'm just trying to get a little The transfer case on the Wrangler kind of sits like this right here. Maybe just a little bit of tilt, but not by much. The Cherokee sits down like this because of the way the hole pattern here is clocked. So what I'll have to do is make me a template from this from the center of this to here to establish a hole pattern, then I'm going to punch holes, actually in the other transmission, not this one, to set up for the uh, Wrangler hole pattern, the Wrangler clock for the proper angle, because actually the Cherokee sits down like this, so you got to clock it upward. The Cherokee hole pattern is here, this is the Wrangler hole pattern, so it's going to be sitting like this on the Cherokee transmission, I need to punch a new set of holes, these holes, in the other transmission, clocking it upward so it doesn't hit my skid plate. But that's going to be a separate video because I'm going to show you guys how to make the template and all that good fun stuff. Uh, so I still got one thing and I still got to pull my shifter, my transfer case shifter. Uh, exhaust is down, as I just showed you. Here's the fluid, brand new clutch right here, fluid line. This is a new style clip right here. The, the light keeps wiping out the camera. The other style you had to take and push a collar in to unlock it, then you can pull the fluid line out. This particular one right here, you simply slide this clip back right here out of the way, and which is strong as crap. Okay, basically what happens, I'm going to get a screwdriver wedge it out, I can't do that and hold the camera both. You wedge out this clip right here, by sticking a screwdriver under this right here, pull it down, then you pull the fluid line straight back and it pulls it straight out. So that's pretty easy. So basically I got a left fluid line shifter, transfer case shifter, unhook the starter, and motor mount bolts, and this baby's coming out of here. So I'll see y'all in a bit. Okay, starter's unhooked. Exhaust is done, I showed you that a moment ago. Both shifters are off, the transfer case and the shifter are out. And still got fuel lines. It's amazing if you start looking around what you find you still have left before you can pull it. And of course, I still got to break that motor mount loose and 
but you can't exactly pull the bolt out until you got the chain and the cherry picker set up to take the weight off the bolts and then you can pull the bolts out from there but at least you get them broke loose and save yourself a little headache uh, so looks like I probably take them loose right there. They look like either 12s or 13s. Well, actually, that's two different sizes. So I guess probably a 10 or 11. I see they're 12 or 13. Got to take the fuel line loose from bolter to the intake. Then you got to pop them right there loose. I'll be with you in a moment. Okay, we got those bolts out and got that fuel line piece dropped right there. That is a number 10. That's a number 12. And the next thing we do before we pull the supply and return line right there for the fuel, let's just check my sure it's not under any pressure. Honestly, I highly doubt it because this thing's been sitting for a week or two now, about two weeks, while I was searching for another transmission. And these little wide jeeps, I'm being bit by skiers. These jeeps have been known for the fuel pressure not to hold up, not to say built up or whatever. That's kind of the reason why some people complain about it turning over so many times before it starts. So let's just check the fuel pressure. Here's the Schrader valve where you'd normally check fuel pressure. And you just take the tip of the screwdriver and push on it on top of it like a little valve stem. You see, I got nothing. I ain't much figure I did. So now that tells you you can take these off without getting sprayed with the gas. Be right back. Okay, quick rundown how to pull these fuel lines. You want to push in on them push them this way push them in push in this little black piece right here push it inside the fuel line then pull back work with it now it may actually take two hands to do this there it goes that's all you gotta do you push it inward push this inside which releases our spring clips and then pull it back off the fuel t off the uh, rail not too hard All right, ladies and gentlemen, moment of truth. We're bringing the motor out now. I'm not editing anything in between this, so if you see my butt crack stuck in there, sorry, I hate it for you. But we're bringing the motor out. Cussing, fussing, mistakes, perfection, whatever. It's coming out. Let's do this. All right, we got the chain hooked up front. I'm back in the motor right now. Still got the transmission hooked up, so I've kind of got the chain set where it's tail biased a little bit. So, theoretically, yeah, go ahead and pull that bolt out. Alright, that bolt mount bolts out. And, alright, we're gonna jack it up just a little bit because I'm gonna, this uh, uh, motor mount bolt up here for fish knocking it out. The dish right here is not going to slide now, so what you do, you get a uh, screwdriver. I know you can't see it from there. Pack that bolt out. Sounds good in theory to me so far.
As you bring the motor up like this, what you want to do is start walking around looking. Did you forget something? Did you forget to hook this and hook that? It's nice to sneak up on you when you're... And this is the time to make sure that you're bringing it out. Because you don't want to rip something up as you're bringing it out. hitting on the cross down here so we gotta bring her up a little higher. and I'm going to set the motor down on the ground. everybody we pulled the motor out it's kind of sitting on the ground but the cherry picker just bottomed out but what I'm gonna do is probably jack it back up if I can find me you know like an extra wheel or something like that stick it under the oil pan jack it up sit on the oil pan that way we'll get the chain the cherry picker and everything off so there you go you got to see me pull the motor out of the Jeep fun fun and I'll see you guys at the next step Okay, we have the motor sitting on that tire right there, and what you see down below it is one of those uh, car dollies. I nickname them called uh, car skates, what kind of what I call them. They go underneath your tire, and you can roll them around on concrete or whatever. So this way, it's a little bit on the front bias side as far as weight. What I'm going to do is take a strap, go from here all the way around the whole thing, strap the back of it down across the bell housing back here. They'll keep it from being too tippy from rolling off the tire and stuff. Then I'm going to take it and roll it back over into here, get the other motor, set it right beside of it. And then, uh, because the other motor come out of a Cherokee, the front accessories here, 
like the um, fan on a Cherokee is actually right here where this idler pulley is and there's a few configurations different on the fronts of the motor so basically what I'm going to do is all the crap you see here on front of this I'm going to transfer it to the Cherokee motor and I'm going to smack my son upside his head <laughs> um, so basically change all the Cherokee stuff over out change the crap I'll get down in a minute take the Cherokee stuff off put the Wrangler stuff on the Cherokee motor and also like I mentioned earlier about the uh, Transmission clocking. This can be. I'll show you the guys. The I'll show you guys the difference in it. But I, like I said, I'm gonna do a video of it, and but I'll probably make it a separate video, YouTube video. Because along with that YouTube video, what I'm gonna do in demonstration of showing you guys how to clock the transfer case to the Cherokee. Along with that, I'm gonna make a template that you guys are gonna be able to download from my website, which is www.fixjeeps.com. So, any of you guys ever have to run into this case where you use a Cherokee transmission? Yeah, I gotta get that stud. It won't come all the way out. I gotta screw it out from the backside. Uh, if you guys you know your transmission goes out and you discover you find yourself a Cherokee transmission and they're clocked wrong, meaning these holes are in the wrong position, you guys just jump on my website, www.fixjeeps.com, download a template, and you take that template and just rotate it around through here and it shows you where to drill, where to drill your holes at. And so I'll have all that stuff pushed up on my side, and I'll let you know when I get that done. So I think for the moment, it's about to start to rain again. I got really lucky getting this thing out today. So I'm going to wrap this baby up so it don't get rain inside of it. And I've got some chicken chili I made in there, and I think I want some of it. So anyway, for today, it's a wrap. See you guys on the next round. Alright, boys, since my shop is so full of uh, tools, yeah, that's it, uh huh, and other crap. Okay, I'll just be honest with you, a lot of crap and tools. Uh, then just gonna sit right here in front of the Jeep, and I've got it covered up. And what you see I'm using here is uh, not just black plastic, but it's actually a contractor, heavy duty contractor bags. These things are 55 gallon size bags, there's 18 to a by a bag here or whatever you want to call it and it's got a little split right here where you can just pull them out one by one these things are super heavy duty they're thick and being a 55 gallon size you can take it uh now the six cylinders a little bit different story but the um like you got a v8 even a long block you can wrap a whole engine in one of these things and tie it off in the back and you're good to go so there you go here's your little tip heavy duty contractor bags instead of going to those uh, online performance places where you go buy you know car parts whatever and buy their engine bags as they call them these are a hell of a lot better and much cheaper so there you go see I just got that wrapped around the uh, transmission right there on the back I got one laying over the front because it won't go if I was to take the intake off and all that it would fit but I've got it way down it's not going anywhere so there you go quick little tip, tip. Trash, big old huge trash bags as an engine bag. Alright, see y'all in the next round. Well, I'm out here picking up my stuff, getting ready to go in for the evening. And I you know, put my motor mount bolts back in place so I don't lose them. I was thinking, where the heck I put them bolts at? And look what I found. I didn't even notice this when we pulled the motor. Check out the motor mount. I think it's due for a new motor mount. What do you think? Well, get them on order. And this one here is cracked, so it's not far behind. So, yep, a couple of new motor mounts coming up.